Dr. Chinto Fong. I'm uh, the chief of the Division of Genetics here at the University of Rochester Medical Center in the Department of Pediatrics and Medicine. There are a number of companies that is accessible to the general public where you send in a DNA sample, be it saliva or blood. And what they'll do is to study a number of defined locations throughout the genome. The purpose of that is to determine whether uh, one's risk for uh, any given number of common disorders are increased or decreased. Uh, certainly, a lot of these companies use uh, research data that has been generally sponsored by the NIH and has been gone through, you know, gone through peer review and so forth. So the results are re as reliable as the current status. Uh, but given that this is really the infancy of studies like this, how those numbers will change, uh, we do not yet know. Uh, when I say numbers, what I'm referring to is that the, the likelihood whether somebody's risk for a certain disease is increased or decreased is measured in something called the odds ratio. Uh, when you have a high odds ratio, if your odds ratio of 10, that means your risk for developing that disorder is 10 times over that of the general population. Uh, so there is a certainly a, a selection bias for individuals who would opt for to participate in this study because they are there to help out with the data rather than uh, using this as a diagnostic test for themselves or, or for any other you know, genetic counseling issue. So in some ways it doesn't surprise me that the behaviors would not change and might be a testament to how well the consent process works. I think the idea of knowing the risk for a number of diseases uh, is a positive trend perhaps a good thing for patients, if not for their providers. Uh, the difficulty is that I think the advantage is only going to be uh, maximized if the individuals that undergo through the testing uh, has, got, has in, uh, adequate counseling. Because the interpretation and how to view the results and how you might modify your, your lifestyle is going to be the key. The question is that do we have the resources to provide genetic counseling for everyone who just opt to have their own internet-based or public-based testing. Uh, are, are physicians ready to advise patients based on these results that they did not order themselves? I think that's a challenge.